climate. Recent breakthroughs, including most recently at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, have finally put fusion energy within reach. Unlocking this virtually unlimited source of clean energy will drive down costs for families struggling with gas and oil prices. It'll reduce our carbon footprint and help ensure a uh, healthy future of our planet for generations to come. But it won't happen without building on the public and private sector investments in research and development that have gotten us to this point. So Dr. Unruh Cohen, first thank you for your incredible work over the last two Congresses. In your testimony, you mentioned that US public sector investment in clean energy trails other countries including China. The Department of Energy is considering applications from private fusion companies for $50 million in public-private partnerships in a new milestone-based funding program that would support building fusion pilot plants. But according to the Fusion Industry Association, the funding opportunity announcement was significantly oversubscribed with applications requesting close to three times as much funding as was allocated. Can you just tell us why public investment in fusion energy is so critical for accelerating the impact of existing private investment in the United States? Yes, thank you for the question. And I spent a lot of my career uh, working for Ed Markey, both in the House and the Senate. So I'm very familiar with the great clean energy technology in Massachusetts and the companies that are spinning up from that. And fusion is one of those. Obviously, you got a great one um, there. and. Um, you know, the promise of fusion is amazing, uh, and we've spent um, a lot of important research, federal research dollars going into that. We have had these really um, exciting breakthroughs, uh, and I know, um, you know, we're on the cusp of uh, being able to understand the potential there more and hopefully uh, move forward to commercialization. Uh, I hadn't realized it had been oversubscribed. I hope that's something that this committee and the Appropriations Committee uh, can work on to see if there's more resources um, available for that. Uh, same. Did you want to add to so, that? So, so Congressman, uh, the, uh, probably one of the leading fusion companies in the country and the world is in or around your district in Devon. Uh, I think that plant is going to, when it comes online in 2025, will well outperform what happened at Livermore. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't like to talk about how much, but I have a pretty good idea. Um, when I, w I ran the fusion energy program for the country, uh, we decided when we were there to engage with the private sector, where DOE had not engaged with the private sector before. We had to you know, break a little glass uh, on that. Uh, I think the milestone program that we started and we started moving along uh, is, uh, needs to be expanded. And I know that some of the proposals and Build Back Better had, had made that larger. Yeah. I would highly encourage um, that, that we take the momentum on technology innovation, in particular in your state and your district, uh, but, but elsewhere. And, and, and I, I would recommend that everyone here look at expanding that. And I, I look forward to bipartisan work on that. I mean, I'll leave the committee with this. The, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission recently released their options for licensing and regulating fusion energy systems, which highlights the important safety and security benefits of fusion energy. No high-level nuclear waste, no chance of a meltdown, no special nuclear material like plutonium or uranium. But the paper also leaves some regulatory ambiguity, suggesting that future fusion power plants may be regulated like fission, which is a very different energy process. So I look forward to, hope, to making sure that we put the right regulatory uh, in place, environment in place, so that we don't stifle that innovation as it's coming uh, to bear. Thank you.